Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and thanks for stopping by. In today's video I have six DIY planner ideas made from Dollar Tree stash materials, recyclables, as well as upcycling items I just already had around the house. We have farmhouse and boho styles and even a couple of Kirkland's dupes. And if you don't see something you like in this group, check back in a few days since this is only part one of a two-part series and I will have another six planners in the next video, but let's go ahead and get started with part one. First up is one of those Kirkland dupes and I'm going to be diving into my Dollar Tree stash for this one using these wire brushes that I had on hand. Now these you can get in the hardware department at Dollar Tree and I'm going to be removing all of those bristles. Now be careful those bristles are extremely sharp and painful if you touch them or um, even when you're removing them with these pliers you know, just be very careful. Um, at one point I actually flinged it up and thankfully I have my glasses on so no issues there but um, just be you know don't be just yanking them out is what I'm trying to say because I uh, just kind of hold on tight with the pliers and then um, you know, pull them out. Don't kind of just fling them like I just uh, showed the the pliers there uh, because uh, you don't want those wire bristles to come flying out at you. So then after I have removed all of the bristles from three of the brushes, I'm going to take my little favorite switch driver drill there and I'm going to drill a hole through the top center. I'm gonna use the top center where the bristle was and use that as my guide and then just continue to drill the hole through all the way to the back side. And I'm gonna do that on all three of the handles and then I'm going to do the same at the bottom, on the bottom row, go through the bottom hole in the middle and just do the same thing all the way through to the back and do that for all three of the brush handles. Next, I'm gonna take a regular Dollar Tree black bucket and I'm going to remove that wire handle. Just pull it with my pliers. I do need to use the pliers though because it was kind of hard to pull off with my hands. But just once I got that first side off, the other side just popped right off. Since this planner will be going outside, I do want to paint the handles with some polyurethane before attaching them to the bucket. Once the handles are dry, I'm going to line up my first handle directly opposite of the spout on the bucket. And so I'm going to just hold it in place and then take my drill again and just drill a hole now through the spot where it was on the handle and then straight through the bucket. Then I'm going to take some number six machine screws. I only had the one and a quarter inch um, on hand. Probably just a one inch would have done just fine, but we're using what we got. And then I just fastened the screw through the wood handle straight through to the bucket. I did have a little bit of a trouble there, so I just kind of brought it all the way through the handle and then just popped it through the bucket. And then I was able to uh, fasten it with um, the nut and um, you can see here where it is a little bit um, too much excess sticking out but it'll do for our purposes and then I just tightened it with my pliers for my second and third handle I'm going to line them up between where the bucket handle was attached and the spout so right in the middle there in between is where I'm going to apply uh, my second handle on this side and then when I do it on the other side it will also be between those two spots. So the first one was attached right uh, directly opposite the spout, the second one between where the handle was and the spout, and now that third one is going to again go between the handle and the spout. And then here is the finished project filled with a beautiful begonia plant. And here is the original from Kirkland's. The Dollar Tree version costs about $4 to make and the Kirkland's is around $79 for the small planter. For the next project, I will be refurbishing this galvanized tub. Now you can see this little guy had much better days in the past. It was actually a great party tub. And so, you know, it had a little a bottle opener there in the back. Oh, there's a little gecko. Hi, little gecko friend. Um, and it had a little bottle opener in the back. And then uh, you could fill this with ice and put, you know, soft drinks and beers and that type of thing in the, uh, in the bucket. But today we're going to be repurposing it as a planter with little legs. And I'm going to use these 
black tea uh, bottles for the legs and you can see some banging them around I'm trying to show you how sturdy they are um, technically I should probably fill these with sand to make sure that the walls stay nice and secure but I'm gonna wing it I'm gonna live on the wild side and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these uh, as I've done already here with some black paint and then I'm going to simply add some E6000 to the bottom of the bottle and then I will simply attach those to the uh, bottom of the bin. Now I did go ahead and wash the bin but I am not going to scrub it down. I want to keep some of that nice patina. You can see what the original looked like and now it has that nice aged patina and we're always out here trying to distress and uh, age things so here's the real thing and we're not going to touch it leave it just as it is and then voila here is the finished project flipped back over again and filled with some beautiful flowers for the next project i'm going back to my dollar tree stash and i'm going to get two potato mashers that's right potato mashers and also this little galvanized planter and um, before i do anything though i want to paint the metal parts of the potato mashers with black paint once the paint is dry, I'm going to take my two mashers and I'm going to zip tie those uh, to the handles of the little galvanized pot. And I am going to use two zip ties to each side for added stability. And then once I had attached both sides, I just went back and clipped off the tails. Some options for the bottom would include these cedar planks. Now these you can just get at a regular grocery store if they have a grilling section. That's what's so neat about these. You can even put the two pieces together and then that would create a thicker platform on the bottom. And then um, I'm going to just go ahead and glue those on the masher part, uh, the metal part onto the wood. Now this is one option, but because we're in the situation we're in, I wanted to give you a few others. Another option would be a rectangular frame from the Dollar Tree. And um, in this case, I would have painted the glass black and then uh, again, just go ahead and glue the masher onto the top. But what I'm actually going to use is this wood plaque that I had gotten from Michael's many, many moons ago, as my dad used to say. And um, this is just something I had in my craft stash. It's been around for years and years. And I said, let me use it on this. And um, sorry about the blur. I don't know what is wrong with my camera. It keeps doing this. It's making me crazy. But what I'm trying to show you there is the Waverly Antique Wax that I'm going to use to just give this a nice coat, just to give it a little color and a little protection um, on the little wood plaque that I'm going to use as the platform for this plant stand. And here you can see um, after all the wax has been applied. This gives it a nice color and a nice... And then I'll just glue the metal part of the masher onto the wood platform with some E6000 glue. And then here it is all together, filled with some pretty purple flowers. Next, I'm going back to refurbishing again. And here you can see these nice, large planters that I had originally purchased from Ikea, again, many, many moons ago. Um, they had seen much better days than uh, here, where they're kind of banged up and scraped and paint splattered on them. So, so we're going to see what we can do with these, give them a little upcycle, spruce up. And the first thing I'm going to do is give them a nice coat of the black matte spray paint. While the paint is drying, I just want to jump back into the house to show you the decorative pattern I'm going to be applying to the top of the planter using these Jenga blocks as well as these wood cubes. And I'm just using this pan to illustrate what you know is going to be on the top of the planter. But I'm just going to take them and I'm going to apply them with some hot glue, alternating block, Jenga cube, block, Jenga cube. And here it is on the planter and I'm just using some hot glue to attach it and then I will also be doing some of the uh, polyurethane on top since this will be outside. And then here it is all shiny and new with those pretty wood decorative accents at the top. Next we have another Kirkland's dupe and I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree basket. Um, this is one of the kind of mid-size one that has the little handle on it. I'm just going to remove the handle with some pliers and then I want to remove the top rim from the basket. So I'm just going to go at the very top of that um, vertical piece and just snip it. You can do this either with wire cutters or with scissors. And um, I just prefer the wire cutters. It just feels like it uh, works a little faster. But um, if you don't have these, scissors will do just fine. 
So then this is what it looks like once I've removed the rim all the way around. And um, I do like those little vertical pieces standing up, so I'm going to keep those intact. And then I'm going to use a small can that I'm going to E6000 to the bottom of the basket. Now this can is necessary as it will support the weight of the plant stand and the table. Next, I'm going to take four of the large paint sticks. These are the five gallon ones. I happen to have these on hand, but I originally got these at Lowe's and I think that they cost 98 cents for the three pack. And I'm going to need four of those. Then I'm going to go back to my basket that has a little can attached and I'm going to take one of the paint sticks. I'm going to put the uh, you know, flat side down, uh, leave the handle side up. And then I'm going to take some zip ties and I'm going to uh, zip tie those to one of the panels, one of the little sections there. And it doesn't matter which one you start with, but when you do the second one, the second one needs to go directly across from the first one that you attached. So I'm going to go ahead and again attach two of the zip ties and I'm attaching one at the top and one towards the bottom. And then I'm also making sure that the little nubby part is on the inside of the basket. And then I'll attach a third paint stick to the basket in between the first and the second one. And then the fourth one will go directly across. And then I'm going to take my basket, a pizza pan from my Dollar Tree stash, and also the rim that I had cut off of the basket. And I'm going to take everything out and spray paint it with some ultra matte white spray paint. Before I paint the pizza pan, however, I am going to first wipe it down with some vinegar and then I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge to the surface. This is going to help the paint stick and since this will be a tabletop, I want to make sure I do that. Now here is the rim and the pizza pan after they've been painted white and I wanted to take them back in so that I could explain um, the top to you a little bit. So um, definitely the rim part must be E6000 glued to the tops of the painter sticks. Now the pan here has a couple of options. One, you can keep it loose because it does sit in there really nicely um, and you don't necessarily need to glue it down if you wanted to use it also as a tray. Um, that is a really nice feature if you wanted to do it that way. Now if you don't think you're going to be using it as a tray and you just want to make sure that it's nice and secure, just go ahead and E6000 the pizza pan to the, to the rim. So just before I glued the rim onto the top of the paint sticks, I did decide that I wasn't loving those vertical strips sticking up. Um, I thought it would give it a wispy, whimsical look, but it kind of just looks not right. So I did decide to go ahead and cut those down to the first horizontal line. And actually this does go better with the original inspiration piece from Kirkland's. But let me know what you think in the comments, whether you prefer the wispy one or the more streamlined one. And then once the glue was applied, I just added some candles to the tabletop to weight it down as the glue set up. For the planner that's going to go in the bottom of the basket, I'm going to reuse this ready fill container that um, other plants had come in and I'm going to just spray paint that white. And here is the finished project. So on the bottom, I put a little plant in the basket and then on the tabletop, you have space for another plant or a drink or maybe some other summer essentials. And then here is the Kirkland's inspiration piece. Now, of course, the Dollar Tree version costs about $4 and the Kirkland's version comes in at around $69. Witchy Pooh, what are you doing here? It's not Halloween yet. Actually, she never went away. She's too darn cute. I left her sitting out in my craft room in the corner. And then I realized that her body would make the perfect plant stand. All I would need to do is to replace the top since the top has her head and arms attached to it. And then the lanterns just unhook from there. The only thing that would have to be physically removed would be the little feet attached to the bottom. The only thing new I'm going to need to do is reach back into my Dollar Tree stash and get another one of these shadow boxes and just paint it black. While I'm doing that, let me show you how I did the original body. So from Dollar Tree, I took again two of the shadow boxes. These are the larger ones. And then also four of these dust pans, standing dust pans. And I'm going to just remove the tops. To make witchy poosh, I actually use those tops for her face. But that's another story for another time. Um, what I want to do here, though, is to remove the um, poles and then remove the little plastic piece that's on the inside. 
and then I'm just going to leave the handle on the other end of the pole intact. Next I took my shadow boxes and I painted them black. I also took four of these mini dessert glasses from the Dollar Tree and also painted those black. Once everything was painted, I first glued the four glasses to the bottom of one of the shadow boxes using some E6000 glue. Next I attached the poles. I put the flat side down and then using some E6000 glue, I put a strip of E6000 around the bottom side and then around the bottom of the pole. And then I took some hot glue and placed a strip of hot glue above where I had placed the E6000. Now I'm just going to hold it down and uh, attach it there to the inside of the shadow box. And I'm just going to hold it in place until that hot glue sets. Then I'll just repeat that process for all four poles. And here is the bare bones witchy poo with um, the new top. And like I mentioned earlier, the top pretty much had everything, the hands, the arms, the lanterns, everything attached to it. So just by removing that lid, I was able to just replace it with this one. And now I have a plant stand for the summer. Now here's the finished project with a big old fern on top. Now uh, for a plant this size, I would definitely put a plant at the bottom shelf to weight it down. Also, alternately, if you didn't want to do that, uh, you could also glue some rocks to the bottom of that shelf and then this way it will give it some nice weight. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these six DIY planter ideas, volume one, and I hope that you have something in your Dollar Tree stash, recyclable bin, or some item around your house that you can refurbish and upcycle. And don't forget to be on the lookout for volume two coming up shortly. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on FabTax, where we're putting the extra in ordinary, one DIY at a time.